All right, guys, welcome to Enrolled Agent Test Day Tips. So this training video is going to be for you if you've already scheduled your special enrollment examination with Prometric and you're on your way to take one of three special enrollment examinations. So quick introduction for those that are new to me. My name is Krista Tayas. I teach tax and accounting professionals how to get more clients utilizing social media and scale to multiple six figures. And I do this mm -hmm. with my training program, Tax and Accounting Six figure accelerator. So if you want to work with me, you want to work in a year long group training capacity, go ahead and click the link below, click on some of the resources below this video. All right. So let's talk about what to expect on test day, right? Like what is the test experience like for those that are just now taking this special enrollment examination? So, you know, I prepared a PowerPoint for you guys. If you guys don't know, I am a PowerPoint gal, right? So we're going to go through this information together. All right. So we're going to be talking about test day tips. What do you do? So first things first, you want to review your materials the night before. Okay. You want to pay special attention to topics that you might have originally failed on your practice exams or on your practice pop quizzes, right? So I know before I go for an exam, I really want to make sure that I understand as much information as possible, because let me tell you, we've seen people just miss passing the exam by a few points. So you want to make sure that you understand as much as possible to increase your chances of getting that passing score. So go over and review all of the things that, you know, you just probably didn't get the first time around some of the things that might not be sticking or retaining to you. Go ahead and review those points, paying special attention to those. Now, I do want to call up some additional items that you might need to pay special attention to based upon us helping, you know, dozens and dozens of students pass the examination. These are typically some areas of opportunity. So for the individual special enrollment examination, you want to pay special attention to individual retirement accounts. Okay, so these are your IRAs your traditional, your Roth IRAs, and so forth. You also want to pay special attention to estates and trust, right? So what is the uniform? And then the third one is the CARES Act. So if you're taking your exam for testing period 2021 through February 28th, 2022, it does include some CARES Act related questions. So you want to make sure that you understand those, okay? Now, outside of the individual, I didn't put on here representation or business. So for instance, on representation, you really want to understand what constitutes as representation before the Internal Revenue Service, right? Like what can you do as an EA? How can you represent someone and all of the nuances that goes along with that? For a business, you really want to pay special attention to basis of assets also, make sure that you truly understand all of the different business entities and their tax requirements. So truly understand partnerships, corporations, S-corps, nonprofits, and how they are taxed and their tax requirements, okay? So that's just some extra stuff that I want to give you guys. But honestly, everyone is going to be different, right? What I might need to review, you might not need to review, right? You might understand those concepts clearest day. So you want to make sure that you go and review the items that you have personally had problems with truly understanding or grasping the material or passing on the final exam or the pop quizzes. Okay. Now, what you also want to do is review each domain again the night before. And so what I mean by that is in a prior video, I showed you guys how to access what's actually going to be tested on the special enrollment examination. So they give you each domain. So on domain one is preliminary work and taxpayer data. It's going to be 14 questions. So you want to just make sure you review this document in each domain, how many questions is going to be asked and make sure again, that you just understand as much as possible. Cause like I said, just a few points can make a difference between you passing or failing the special enrollment examination. All right, moving back here. So let's see what else do I have here for you guys? So I did put here, set your clothes out in everything you need the night before, right? Do not wear a hat. And the reason why you can't wear a hat is because they're not going to allow you to wear that when you are in the testing center. They don't allow any hats in the testing center. I made the mistake of wearing a hat one time 
because, you know, I didn't want to do my hair. So I was just like, okay, I'm just put my hair in a ponytail and put on a cap. Well, unbeknownst to me, they were like, no, you got to take that cap off and put it in your locker. And my hair was just crazy. So I was a little embarrassed about that. Right. So just prepare yourself, especially my ladies. I like to maybe throw on a cap um, for those bad hair days. Just do your hair, right? Put in a nice bun or ponytail, something simple that it's going to be out of your way. Now, the second thing you do want to make a note is to make sure you wear something comfortable. I remember on one exam, I was wearing some jeans that just was a little bit, you know, too tight around my waist. So when I sat down, it was just uncomfortable for three hours. So I've made it a best practice and I tell my clients to make it a best practice to wear maybe some sweatpants, you know, some pants with like an elastic waist because you just want to be comfortable. You don't want your clothing to distract you or to make you feel uncomfortable while you're in the testing center. The other thing is you want to make sure that you bring some sort of light sweater or jacket, sometimes even in the summertime, right? Or even if you live in a warmer part of the country because the testing centers, they might be a little chilly because of air conditioning, right? Or even if it's not getting a lot of heat and maybe you're testing in the wintertime, But because these are like isolated rooms, they might not get the best heated insulation for whatever reason. It could be a little chilly in some of those rooms. So you want to just make sure you bring like a hoodie or a jacket with you just in case you get a little chilly. Because again, you don't want anything to distract you from just focusing on your special enrollment examination. Now, you do want to make sure that you set all everything out the night before, right? You want to set out your clothes. You want to have everything. You want to put your keys where you can find them, your purse, your bag, your wallet, everything. You just want to make sure you set it out the night before because you just want to wake up and you just want to have a smooth morning. You don't want any hiccups, anything to distract you. Now, the day of your test, you know, most people take morning tests to get it out the way. So if you are, if you did schedule a morning test or whether you scheduled an afternoon test, I need you to eat something, okay? I have made the mistake and I've had students make the mistake of not eating, you know, a substantial meal and they were starving. And the worst thing that can happen or one of the worst things that can happen to you is that you're distracted from hunger pains and your stomach is growling and it's, you know, making the room noisy, right? Because mind you, you're in a testing center with other students that are taking other exams, right? For other licensing or professional credentials, okay? Um, So those hunger pains can get a little loud. So don't distract yourself by being hungry. Make sure that you eat a substantial breakfast. Nothing crazy, you know, just something substantial that can fill you up. Maybe some oatmeal is always a great option to eat because it's heavy in fiber. So it's going to leave you full for a while. You want to make sure, of course, that you are relieved of, you know, of your human function. So make sure you use the bathroom before you actually sit down for the exam, especially if you've been drinking coffee that morning or drinking a lot of water. You want to make sure that you use the bathroom, though you can take bathroom breaks, right? You can. However, some of those breaks, the time would keep going. Just so you know, you only get one 15 minute break during your enrollment slot. So you want to make sure that you go to the bathroom before you sit down for the exam. And then maybe go again during your 15 minute slot after you finish the first portion. And I'm going to have a training video just going over the test. We'll go through a demo of the test on the Prometric website because they do have a demo for you guys. So make sure you look out for that video too. Now you do want to give yourself at least a 30 minute buffer in the morning, right? So a lot of these test centers are nearby, especially if you live in a metropolitan city. So I think, you know, the furthest test center that I've gone was about an hour away just because I wanted to take it on a particular day. And the only testing center that was testing on that particular day was an hour away. But I made sure that I left, you know, an hour and a half before I had to be there before the time I was scheduled to be there. You want to give yourself a buffer because, you know, you guys might have heard in other videos, it was a situation where traffic, you know, was unexpected. And you don't want any unexpected delay to make you late or to even make you frazzled. You want to walk in calm, collected, and with a clear mind. So make sure you give yourself enough time to travel to your testing center. Now, you it goes without saying, you know, of course, we have Google Maps and things like that, but sometimes you might still get turned around. You might miss an exit. So having that extra buffer time 
is going to help you make sure that you get on time without being razzled and frazzled or being late. Now, whenever I pull up in the testing center, in the parking lot of the testing center, I always review my materials one last time, right? So I'm like going through my book, you know, I'm going on my online course, like I'm reviewing everything one last time before I actually walk in, because I just want to make sure that all of the information is fresh on my brain as much as possible. Now, do not bring any of your testing materials inside of, or any of your study materials inside of the testing center, leave that stuff in your vehicle. Really, the only thing that you want to bring into the testing center is your government ID. Okay. They are going to give you a locker. So as soon as you go in, you're going to give them your identification and they will allow you to put your belongings in a locker. So make sure you put your phone on vibrate or you turn it on, like do not disturb. You let your family know that you're going to be unreachable for three hours, right? Make sure they know that. So they're not alarmed or worried that they can't reach you. And you're going to put everything that you don't need in your locker. And this is including any food or drinks that you might have. They're not going to let you bring that inside the testing center. Now, one of the things that they started to do, and they didn't do this when I first, very first took the special Roman examination several years ago, but they're going to have you empty your pockets and like check you down, right? Like frisk you down. They don't touch you. Okay. But they're going to ask you to pull your pockets out to make sure that you don't have any you know, materials, you know, any um, cheat sheets in your pockets or anything. They're going to have you uh, roll up your sleeves, right? Roll up your pant legs. They're also going to have you pull off your glasses. So if you are wearing some sort of reading glasses or prescription glasses, they're going to have you pull them off and hold them up in a light because they want to see they aren't one of those smart glasses that can actually read the material and things like that. So once they checked you down and, you know, they give you the go ahead, you're going to sign in to take your test and they're going to seat you at a computer, right? It's going to be a numbered desk and this is going to be your desk. Now the computer stations, they do have headphones. So if you want, you can put those headphones on just as an extra barrier of like noise reduction, right? Like the test doesn't have any sound, but you can put these headphones on if you just want to have like all of your thoughts just in your head. Some people like to test like that. Other people don't. So what you want to do is make sure you get comfortable. You take a deep breath and you read the instructions and you start the examination. Now the examination is 100 questions. So they're going to ask you 50 questions in the beginning. They're going to let you take a 15 minute break. If you want to, I definitely implore you to take a 15 minute break. So after you submit your first 50 questions, It's going to say, are you sure you want to submit these 50 questions? Because it can't be undone. You're going to say yes. And it's going to let you take a 15 minute break on your 15 minute break. I would implore you to go to the bathroom, even if you don't have to go to the restroom, but go to the restroom just to stretch your legs, take a deep breath, just get some fresh air. Okay. From there, now you can go back in and you can take the remaining 50 questions. Now, all in all, it's going to be three hours, upwards to three hours that you're going to be in there. This is why you want to take advantage of taking that 15 minute break. Now, after you hit submit on the last 50 questions, your results should pop right up. It should let you know if you passed immediately, passed or failed, but you know, hopefully it's going to be a pass. So you're going to get your pass. You're going to be really excited because you see that you passed already, but you won't be able to like scream up and down because other people are testing. So you're just going to be cheesing, walking out. You're going to sign your name out. And then when you get to your car, you're going to do like your happy dance that you passed (laughs) the special enrollment examination. And if you're a part of my group, go ahead and screenshot that, post that in our Facebook group so we can all celebrate you. It's such a wonderful feeling to pass all parts, but at least one part of the special enrollment examination. All right, guys. So this is the entire process, right? And I hope this was very helpful for you. If you have any additional questions that you want me to answer, go ahead and drop your questions below this training video. And I'll see you guys next time. Oh, and be sure to subscribe to my videos, right? Hit the subscribe button and share this with your colleagues that are looking to take the special enrollment examination. Talk to you soon, guys. Bye.